virtual reality is quickly becoming the next big technology with video games. Very much like the jump from 2D to 3D or standard definition to HD, virtual reality is that next big step. It's not just some sort of gimmick like the Wii Motion Controller or the Kinect, it's actually the future. I've actually had the chance to try out all three of the big headsets coming out this year, the PlayStation VR, the Oculus Rift, and the HTC Vive. Today I'll be doing a comparison of all three headsets and letting you guys know which one is the first virtual headset you should buy. Let's start off with the cheapest headset, the PlayStation VR. The PlayStation VR costs $400 and will be coming out later this October. And if you combine everything that you really need to run this thing, you need the PlayStation VR and a PS4 and a PlayStation 4 camera. Currently you can buy a PlayStation 4 for about $350 and a PSVR headset bundle with the camera, the headset, the motion controllers, and a game costs $500. So in total, if you literally had nothing to work with and you got a PlayStation VR headset with a PS4, it would cost $850 tops. And even with that $850 price tag, if you literally had nothing to work with, that's still a much cheaper option than any of the other headset setups. Now the PSVR has a 5.7 inch 1080p display, but that's on a single display, so when you actually put the headset on, per eye you're only actually getting 960 by 1080 p Now even though that resolution is low, you actually have a much higher refresh rate on the PSVR than compared to the Rift and the HTC Vive. The PlayStation VR has a 120Hz refresh rate compared to the 90Hz refresh rate on both the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, and that difference will definitely come in handy, especially for anyone that gets motion sickness when it comes to virtual reality. In terms of the game, Sony definitely has the upper hand on the fact that they're already a game company that has the first party support as well as the relations with third party support. Eve Valkyrie, for example, is an awesome space shooter that puts you in the cockpit of a giant spaceship in the middle of the galaxy. War Thunder, very much like its 2D free to play counterpart, is another dogfighting shooter, but this time you're actually inside of the plane and not just the camera behind the plane. And lastly, London Heist is a game that puts you in the shoes of a robbery crew, and it's definitely one of the most interactive games coming to PSVR. Now, aside from the virtual reality games on PSVR, you could actually play every single PS4 game on your PSVR headset. But instead of being a virtual reality game, it more or less feels like you're playing your PS4 on a giant movie theater screen in the theater alone. It's more of a cinematic experience rather than a virtual reality one, but the option is there. Now when you're actually using the PlayStation VR, most of the time you'll actually be stationary or sitting down. You won't be moving too much unless you're playing an interactive game that uses the PlayStation Move controller, but for the most part you'll actually be playing sitting down with the DualShock 4. Now let's move on to the Oculus Rift. The Oculus Rift costs $600 and this comes with the headset, all the necessary sensors, an Xbox One controller, as well as two games, Eve Valkyrie and Luck Tales. Now aside from that $600 price tag, you actually need a very powerful capable gaming machine to work with the Oculus Rift. So most recommended specs recommend an i5 Intel processor and a GTX 970, and a computer around that price will roughly cost you about $800 to $1000. So with the Oculus Rift with the $600 price tag and this gaming PC, you're looking to spend at least $1,400 to $1,600 total for a capable Oculus Rift virtual reality setup. That's about double the price of a PlayStation VR setup if you buy a PS4 and the VR bundle. So yes, the Oculus Rift is much more expensive than the PlayStation VR, but it also has better specs. In terms of a display, it actually has two displays, one per eye, and they run at 2160 by 1200 a much higher resolution than the 1080p single one on the PSVR. Here's where it gets tricky though, the refresh rate is set to 90Hz instead of the 120Hz, meaning that at most it's going to get 90 frames per second, but it's also understandable considering that the resolution of games is much higher compared to the PSVR. It's sort of like the argument that's going on between the PS4 and the Xbox One, where some third party games on the PS4 run at a higher resolution but at a lower frame rate, whereas the Xbox One has a lower resolution but a much more stable frame rate. It's sort of the same thing except PlayStation has a higher frame rate and less of a resolution, and the Oculus Rift has a higher resolution but less of a frame rate. Now while the Rift doesn't have those third party connections that Sony has, it does have the support in the indie game community. The final version of the Oculus Rift isn't technically even out yet, and it already has a library of games from the indie community, modifications of old games to run on the Rift, and larger titles like Eve Valkyrie on the way. The headset launches on March 28th with 30 titles, most of which are mostly tech demo experiences, but a few like Eve Valkyrie that are quality games. Thanks to the partnership with Microsoft, you'll be able to play Xbox One games on your Oculus Rift as if you were playing them in a giant movie theater. 
very much like the PSVR and its PS4 games. I also really want to clarify that it is just a 2D giant display in the form of a headset. So you're not going to be playing Halo VR or Sunset Overdrive VR anytime soon. Now very much like the PlayStation VR, the Oculus Rift is meant to be played stationary or sitting down. You do have the option to buy the Oculus Touch controls, but those aren't available at launch, and you have to buy them separately. So they're sort of like Move controllers, but much more advanced, and they feel a lot better than those controllers. With that said, for the most part, the game system or the headset was made to be played stationary with an Xbox One controller. That's how they were demoed for most of its lifespan in terms of the development, and it is until recently that they actually came out with these touch controllers at the last minute. And lastly, we have the HTC Vive, the best virtual reality headset that money could buy. For $800, you get the HTC Vive headset, the sensors, and the motion controllers. And that's not including the capable gaming machine that you need to buy or own to run this virtual reality headset. It's pretty much exactly the same like the Oculus Rift in terms of what it needs. An $800 to $1,000 computer on top of the $800 price tag for the headset. So in total you're going to be spending $1,600 to $1,800 for both the computer and the headset. Yes, it's very expensive, but it's also the best virtual reality experience that you could buy right now. You see, the HTC Vive, unlike the Oculus Rift and the PSVR, is all about virtual interaction with the virtual world and just an immersive experience. You have to set up two light sensors at the corner of each room, so for example this living room, you need to set up a sensor up there in the corner and over there in the corner, and you would need to have an open space area to move around and interact with the virtual world. Now the tech in the Vive is pretty much the same as the Rift. It runs at a resolution of 2160 by 1200 at a refresh rate of 90Hz. But because the Vive has a much more interactive VR experience, the games are also very different too. All the games on the Vive, at least the full VR ones, have full motion interactive. Games available at launch include The Wake, Sisters, and Hover Jumpers, an awesome multiplayer close quarter shooter that's really fun to play with friends. There's also a partnership with HTC and Valve to get Steam VR support on the Vive, meaning that some Steam VR games will be available on the Vive, as well as some other games will be available as a cinematic game viewer, very much like the PSVR with PS4 games and the Rift with Xbox One games. So which headset is best for you? The Rift and the Vive are definitely better headsets than the PlayStation VR. They have better hardware, but they also need better hardware to run. They're also very premium products that feel like they're still in their development stages. The PlayStation VR, on the other hand, is the cheapest of the bunch, but it makes for a much more accessible product. Chances are that there are more PlayStation 4s out there in the wild than there are high-end gaming PCs that could actually run a Rift or a Vive, at least when talking about the average gaming consumer. Sony has their own studios working on VR games and has already established VR game partnerships with the likes of Square Enix, Sega, and EA. Because of all this, the PSVR feels like a finished product. It might not be the most advanced one, but it's definitely the most accessible one and it feels like it has a future with the support of both first party and third party game company support. After all, these are the same game companies that have been making the games you play on your console and your PC for the last decade. If you're debating on getting a VR headset this year, get the PlayStation VR. It's easily the most pro-consumer headset coming out this year. If you have the money, you can go with one of the higher-end headsets, but keep in mind you're buying a premium product that feels more like a beta headset than an actual full retail one. Thank you very much for watching this comparison between the HTC Vive, the PSVR, and the Oculus Rift. Let me know what you think of the headsets in the comment section below. Are you ordering one of them, or all three of them, or two of them? Let me know in the comment section below. If you want to stay up to date with me off of YouTube, you can check out my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I'm really active on all those social networks, and you can find them in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to be notified whenever I release a new video. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Later.